what's really interesting is that certain cognitive human functions are actually really easy for machines to figure out. That's why usually now when you call up for customer service on the phone, you usually have a computer voice talking to you these days. And certain human functions are basically almost impossible for computers to replicate, which is like, so um, my daughter's bilingual. And so my wife will be walking on the street, my wife on one side, my, uh, my, myself on the other side. She'll speak Chinese to my wife, switch English to me, Chinese to my wife, switch back and forth over 100 feet. And uh, that is something co that's called context switching, which is from different directions. Uh, this person, this person, this person, each has a different context and your brain can switch between. No one in the artificial intelligence field has been able to figure out even remotely how to get a computer to do that. So something, so sometimes things that very astute professionals can do, computers can do, and something a three-year-old can do, my daughter's three and a half, a computer can't do. And that's the thing that's challenging about this because it isn't a universal replacement for human capabilities. In some places it is, in some places it's just augmentation. So um, this all started with something called machine learning. And there's two types of machine learning. One is that's exactly, one is supervised learning. So supervised learning is basically when the machine, you tell the machine the question, you also validate the machine's answers. So I actually have a buddy who runs a startup in China, which is around autonomous driving. And what he does is um, he pays taxi drivers to put cameras on their car, and they just take a bunch of video. Then he takes that video and he sends it to interns working in Chongqing or something. And for every image they identify, they get like one RB, right? And so then, and they just do that millions of times because they have like a thousand interns doing this in their free time. And that's how they're teaching the machine to learn, right? So the machine figures it out. And then you, you and then, and now at this point, they're at the point where they're correcting machines. So the machine will say, oh, it's this, it's a stop. So they say, no, no, it's something else. Then there's, that's the easy part of machine learning. The hard part is unsupervised machine learning. And unsupervised is when you just got to, like this, like what you guys are doing right now. There's just a bunch of stuff going on, and you as a brain need to figure out what, that, what does that mean to me? This person speaking, this person moving, a camera back here, pretty girl, handsome boy, person I don't like, I'm thirsty. These are all these stimuli going on, and you as a thinking brain make a decision, what do you do? Right? And that's much, much more difficult, but that's also how humans operate. And that's also when we think about terminators and killer robots and all of these things. Those are the sort of problems that need to get solved. And so unsupervised learning is, um, is much slower, much more expensive, and much more difficult. Then this has all been enhanced with, so there's a bunch of blob on the page here. Most recently, this thing called deep learning. And if you did have computer programmers in here, neural, neuroscientists, they'd be able to explain this a lot more than me. But basically, it works um, the same way that our brains do which uh, is uh, the fact that there's many, 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 many X's, there's many, many, many Y's, there's many different pathways to get there, and you try to recreate how a, bur how a brain ties all of those together. And so you use actually, you don't use one single algorithm, you use multiple algorithms over multiple steps, and then it can all reconstruct and deconstruct, and then they throw out the whole model, and then they try it again. And so it's basically how, um, uh, basically trying to mimic how a brain functions, which is very different than a traditional root and branch computer program. And um, what's actually very interesting is that from a technology perspective, no one has really figured out how to optimize for deep learning yet. And so have you guys heard of a company called NVIDIA? Did you guys invest stock in a company called NVIDIA? No one invested in a company called NVIDIA? Holy cow, the stock was like $12, now it's like 170 right? So they're the guys that make the GPUs that do all of this deep learning calculation. And they're a super sexy stock. 